I remember when a 16 GB RAM kit was under 100 US dollars. Of course, comparable DDR3 kits were even cheaper. The good old days. We saw a gradual rise in prices until about September of last year, at which point they spiked to uncharted territory. In short, a $100 kit of DDR4 back in 2016 cost nearly $240 today. Just a bit outrageous if you ask me. Likewise, and we've heard this one thousands of times before, and you'll hear it a thousand times from now, the surge in graphics card demand on behalf of a little something called cryptocurrency has propelled prices into even four-figure territory, that's thousands of dollars. A GTX 1080 Ti, for example, debuting in the middle of 2017 for roughly 700 USD, now sells consistently for over 1,000 bucks. Keyword selling. They are in fact leaving the shelves at these prices, it's why they've remained high for this long. If they weren't selling at those prices, the prices would lower. More on that right here. But in this video, I want to address yet another potential victim of the mining craze, power supplies. Several messages, including this one from Dave Ream, have flooded my inbox recently. His says, I recently noticed that MSRPs for a lot of power supplies have shot up about 40 bucks to $100. I bought my EVGA 850G3 last year in August for just over 100 bucks. Now the MSRP is showing at 180. Wonder what your thoughts are on this and if you have experienced this. So let's try to answer this one. Are power supplies next? I want to start first by thanking Dave and a few others in social media for actually asking this question. It is 100% valid, especially when seen in the context of this inhospitable PC build market. PC Part Picker houses an excellent database of price trends across several years, and this is where I'll go first to either confirm or deny this power supply claim. Now what you're looking at is a plot of several low wattage power supplies divided by efficiency. The black line running through each graph indicates average price, while the Y and X axes indicate price and time respectively. As we can see, prices have remained relatively flat since about mid-2016 when this recording began. Keep in mind that this is the low wattage tier, so around 500 watts or so. The black line running through each graph indicates average price, while the Y and X axes indicate price and time respectively. As we can see, prices have remained relatively flat since about mid-2016 when this recording began. Now moving on to the 500 to 800 watt category. We find much of the same story, depending on the efficiency. Average prices range anywhere from 60 bucks to 160. Something worth noting is that a few of the lower tier models do dip below 50 bucks occasionally on this chart, indicated by the various blue trends and grayed areas. PC Part Picker here is taking into account the various vendors with which they have agreements so they can monitor prices over time. On to the 800 to 1000 watt category, prices here are relatively consistent too, save a general upward trend starting early in 2018 for both the gold and platinum 80 plus tiers. At 1000 to 1200 watts, we see the same story regarding a gentle price bump, but nowhere near the degree some are reporting. Also take note, there are two distinct price bumps for the Platinum tier here, which would be what miners are especially interested in. The first occurs at around June 2017, and then again at the start of 2018. We'll discuss the minor PSU preference here in a second. Lastly, we round up the tally with the 1200 to 1500 watt category, where across the board prices do rise in two distinct places yet again, June 2017 and January 2018. Now, while I can't openly conclude today that these price jumps in the higher wattage tiers especially are the direct result of miners, I can confirm a correlation at least between them and graphics cards, because we know graphics cards are being affected by miners directly. Take a look at the GTX 1060 for example. We saw a huge price hike in June 2017, does this sound familiar, and again in January 2018. Same goes for the GTX 1070, RX 570, RX 580, and even the GTX 1050 Ti, a card we largely anticipated would dodge these price hikes. In fact, the only two cards largely unaffected by the sudden surge in mining are Vega 56 and 64, at least according to this database, and that would make sense as these cards are virtually unobtainable. Still great mining cards, by the way, if you're into that sort of thing. So this correlation is pretty strong, I would say. At around the same time in both places, we experienced a bump in both graphics card and high wattage power supply prices. And it actually makes sense if you think about it, because most miners are going to have to go out and buy extra power supplies if they want to buy 10 graphics cards. Most people don't have 10 power supplies already laying around, so that's the first thing. And then you're also going to want as high a wattage as possible because that means that you'll have less maintenance in the long run and less energy loss in the form of heat in the long run if you intend on getting something like an 80 plus platinum or titanium power supply. A lot of miners do like to splice several cards up to the same unit using unconventional methods, however. For example, running four graphics cards or something insane off of a single Molex splitter 
probably isn't the best idea. Molex connections aren't rated for that kind of power draw, especially in the long run. Nonetheless, this would explain why only the higher wattage tiers are being affected. On the whole for these, we're looking at anywhere between a $50 and $100 price hike since June of 2017, which really isn't all that bad when seen in the context of graphics card price hikes. And that's where I'm gonna call this one. While a few of the lower wattage models in particular do appear to have gone up in price, at least just a little bit over the past several months, I wouldn't be willing to say that miners are solely responsible. This just isn't as long-term a trend as the higher wattage models are experiencing. PSU prices in general always fluctuate anyway, depending on demand and availability, and you'll often see something called price rebounding with these models as well. So for example, if a 600 watt 80 plus gold power supply drops to 60 bucks on sale for a few weeks, it may rebound shortly thereafter to a much higher price than MSRP while inventory is being built up again. So simple supply and demand, right? Supply is really low, but demand's still high. The price will be raised until the equilibrium price point is met. So power supplies do tend to fluctuate, but only in the short term, we're seeing a much stronger correlation with higher wattage models. So I expect that those in the market for mining or insane SLI or crossfire configs will really be the only ones truly affected by the PSU price hikes we're experiencing right now on behalf of, I would say, primarily miners. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. I appreciate it. Thumbs down for the opposite, or if you hate everything about life, don't be shy. Be sure to click that red subscribe button down below if you want to see more content like this on YouTube. I appreciate you watching. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.